Hey there, fellows. You remember this lovely car? In a previous video, you would have seen us narrow its tailpipe, reduce the diameter of the orifice through which the exhaust gases were escaping. And during that experiment, we realized something. The higher the back pressure in the exhaust system, the more effective engine braking you get. Car is going to be way more eager to decelerate. And so we got a bunch of people in the comments suggesting we try a retarder. We are going to try and make a valve that blocks off exhaust flow to create that excess pressure to give the engine a tougher time turning over, resulting in it decelerating the vehicle much more effectively, getting the car to slow down better and better. Now there are certain limitations when it comes to these things, but our plan is to block it off completely and go out to do some testing. All right, we know what to do. Let's try setting up a retarder on a lot of Let's do this. One hundred and seven percent engine braking on a lot. How does it work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so we have set up that retarder mechanism. Now, we haven't modified anything in here, haven't added any buttons or switches. We got a handbrake handle in here, that's fully functional. And we've got cables routed down under the car, where the mechanism is located. The one that's gonna block off the exhaust system. And we are going to be activating it with this here lovely lever. You can actually sort of engage the parking brake, and the car is not going to start, with the exhaust being blocked off. That's the retarder. The car didn't have a proper handbrake, so this will be filling its role. And it all works rather well. Now let's have a look from underneath the car. Okay, here's what's going on down here. When you pull the handbrake, the cable pulls on the butterfly valve, so this turns and blocks off the exhaust, and quite effectively at that. But then that is the purpose of a butterfly valve. This will block the exhaust by 99.9% .9 and not allow any of the gases through. Pretty much a regular old throttle body. And look at it sitting there. Okay, let's get out there. We are visiting an old location where we buried some cars under surveillance so they wouldn't be stolen. We also took a lot of for a ride on a snow tube, so there was a lot of work and play happening around here. And over here we have a nice incline that starts over here and goes down. All right, we have a hill, we've prepped the car, time for some testing. I've got enough room to build some speed. Now, the speed does have to be more or less consistent. I'll go for a third. At 25 to 27 k's. Now, I wanted to try in neutral, coasting with no brakes. Whoa! No, nah, man, I'm braking. I'm already going 60. This is just too much. Yeah, if your brakes fail, you'd better stay away from hills like this one. That was some acceleration. Okay, guys, so here's what's up. When you throw the box into neutral, the car picks up a crazy amount of speed. That was pretty far out. And so now let's climb back up and test the engine braking. See how effective it is. Speed is the same. Maybe a tiny bit faster, but not a lot. And no sweat. I let off and we are in third. I'm not touching any of the pedals. Well, there is a bit of braking happening. On the screen it says third gear retarder off. This indicator is gonna pop up later in the video. After this comment it should be self-explanatory. What did I drive into? Great, it stopped. 
But I have traveled really far. There we have a landmark, a couple of poles. Now there was some engine braking occurring, but not quite enough. There is a bit left to be desired. Okay, I'm back up. We can try again. I coasted very far in third gear. It was ridiculous. I suggest we try doing the same, but in second. Now I should be going somewhere around 30 kilometers an hour. Or thereabouts. Not touching the pedals, and off we go. Okay, now there is definitely some engine braking happening. Still accelerating at 30, though. Let's see where it's gonna stop. Yeah, I think you get the picture. Engine braking is way more effective in second gear. The compression and all of that do not allow the engine to go to max revs. That slows down the descent of the car, slows it down on the hill. I mean, that is a pretty big difference from last time. Now I'm gonna drive back up, throw the box into third, and without touching the pedals, I'll get up to the same speed. But this time I'll be using the retarder we set up. So I'll do that and we'll see how it does its thing. Okay, time to get up to speed. And use that retarder to slow down. From the very same speed as last time. Using that ghetto brake. Here we go. Beat off the pedals. Pulling the retarder. Something's wrong. And I've got water spraying onto the windshield. From somewhere. Okay, so the car did stop a bit early. It's not a huge distance. Maybe like 10 meters. But here's the thing. Third gear doesn't put all that much load onto the engine. Which is why... The braking wasn't all that intense. Performance was lacking. That's why the car traveled further than in second with no retarder. In any case, the car didn't roll as far as in third gear without the retarder. And that tells us that the brake actually does something. Albeit it's not as effective in third as we'd want it to be. Which is why I suggest... We start the car, go back up... And test the retarder in second gear. Okay, we're gonna be in second. Trying the engine braking performance while in second, and uh, with... The retarder engaged. Decelerating. Okay, now you can definitely feel it. You can really feel the rear axle slowing the car down. Wow. To think you get that effect by merely blocking off the exhaust. Will you look at that? Isn't that something? Now, with this being so effective in second gear, out of curiosity, I want to try and descend with the box in first. See how it does without the retarder engaged, and with it working. Okay, let's get to it. First gear. Let's see what sort of speed we can get up to. Not touching the pedals, we entered at 15 kilometers per hour. There you go. In first gear you get very good engine braking performance. It is absolutely moving though. And we're even picking up some speed. Even in first gear, look at that. The car is accelerating. Okay, that was almost 18.
Вот. И приехали... And we drove right up until that reel. I didn't even get to where I was when descending in second on the retarder. But obviously first gear is gonna get the revs way up there. More so than any of the other gears. And even at 20 kilometers an hour, the engine is gonna be turning at a pretty high speed. And with how difficult it is to maintain that speed, that translates to good engine braking. So we are at the reel. Yeah, we didn't bring any cones or tires or anything like that. There are plenty of other markers out here. And so let me go back up. Okay, feet off the pedals. Fifteen kilometers an hour and here we go. I have blocked off the exhaust system. Oh, look at that. We've come to a dead stop right on the hill. And we only traveled about 30 meters. Okay, then let's just attempt to roll and try this again on the steepest spot on this hill. Using the retarder, I mean. Okay. I've let go of the clutch. It's gonna pick up speed. Here's the steep bit. Fifteen. Yeah, I think that about sums it up. When using a retarder, engine braking becomes so much more effective. So this isn't a useless device by any means, and it was conceived for good reason. Of course they don't use them in cars like this, but then if you often drive through the mountains, where you've got steep descents, which might not even be in the mountains, but when, say, approaching a river, some kind of body of water, and so if you need to relieve the brakes, this wouldn't be a bad thing to have. Anyway, this works, you saw that for yourselves, 107% efficacy. And that's all I got for you, watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.